Great. Are you all right? Lean on me. Oh, Stevenson. I'm afraid he's had another, Mrs. Drake. Melody in the wagon. Oh, Stevenson, I wish you wouldn't. Mrs. Drake, if a little whiskey helps kill the pain, don't keep it from him. Had these long, Greg? McNeil Prison. The Yankee sergeant clubbed me down. Surgeons ever look at it? I can't find a thing. <laughs> they say it's all in my mind. But it is too, like an explosion. If you could just relax, it might go away. You've been very kind, Mr. Hollister. You're a southerner, aren't you? Yes, ma'am. Virginia. We're South Carolina. I could tell about you. You're a real gentleman. I worry so about him. He never used to drink like that. He was a war prisoner? And he's probably got plenty to drink about. I wouldn't worry. You'll probably get over it one day, headaches and all. If I can help, ma'am, please don't hesitate to call. Aren't you looking the wrong way, Hollister? I, uh, I suppose you're right, Mr. Hale. There's nothing back there but yesterday. That can be hard, I know. Ripping up your roots, saying goodbye to everything you've known and loved. Start over again. You can't truly start over again. The best you can do is to pick up the pieces and try and reassemble them. But you're right, it's hard. I, uh... I saw what you did for young Drake. That was a kind thing to do. Not kind at all. He's a sick man. Does he think whiskey is a cure? Not a cure, maybe, but it helps. Some people aren't constituted to pain or to loss, Mr. Hale. It takes time. Mr. Hollister, Delmonico's wouldn't hire Charlie Worcester as a chef, but he does do pretty well by salt pork and hardtack stew. He just made a bushel of it. Why don't you have supper with us tonight? I was thinking of opening a can of beans. Like you've been doing for the past two weeks, eh? It takes more than food to get a man through life. A little companionship, for instance. We'd be glad to have you. Very well, sir. I accept, on one condition. Condition? I have in my wagon, for medicinal purposes, of course, a dusty jug of a certain fluid that the mountain folk of my native Virginia set great store by. If I may bring it as my contribution. It can't think of any objection. Dust covered, did you say? Pre-war, Mr. Hill. My, my. You liked it? <laughs> Till this very moment, I never realized how sick I am with beans. You should taste the way I fix beans with boiled buffalo horns. Yeah, and with fried buffalo horns. I ain't noticed you turn any down lately. Well, I like fried buffalo horns. When I was a young buck, I used to take it right out of the jug. But I'm afraid that civilization and maturity have spoiled me. Would you happen to have a Just few... Just happen to have them right in your cup, you know. Yes, sir. You know. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Uh, nope. Mr. Hale? Let me alone, will you? Let me alone and go back inside the wagon. Oh, Stevenson, please. Well, that's one you won't have to offer a drink. And he knows how to empty a jug, too, don't he? <laughs> he might have his reasons. Treating that poor little wife of his the way he does? Charlie's right there. Not much excuse for that. Oh, Carl. Howdy. The woman went to sleep. I figured I'd mosey on Sit down. Over. Sit down. Carl, you know John Hollister, Carl Kempton? Well, we smiled, but we ain't shook yet. Howdy, Pleasure. Charles. Pleasure, Pleasure, Mr. Kempton. What would you say to some corn juice that's just about 18 years old? Well, now I'd say you just about saved the day. You know, as a matter of fact, my leg's been hurting me something fierce, and I always like a little sip or two when it starts acting up. 
There's nothing like having a good reason, is there? Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Hollister. If somebody opens a good old-fashioned backwood jug and my leg ain't hurting enough to drink, I usually womp at one with my stick here. <laughs> <laughs> to a safe journey. John, that's a little like drinking liquid music. Excuse me, gentlemen. Oh, please don't get up. All right. Help you, Miss Drake? It's my husband. He's... Well, he's sick, and, and I'm afraid he might hurt himself. Yes, he's been drinking, but he's sick. If your brains had ever been on fire, maybe you'd understand why he drinks. I'm sorry, ma'am. We didn't mean anything. I quite understand. Mr. Hale, I was wondering. Don't worry, Mrs. Drake. I'll look for your husband. Oh, would you? My pleasure. I didn't think old Duke had it in him. <laughs> Greater love hath no man. That's a quotation, you know. Yeah, I know. From the good book. I know. Mm. Little lady don't need to fret herself. Can't hurt a drunk. I'm afraid that's an oversimplification, Carl. Afraid I feel sorry for him. Well, I don't. He is sick, Mr. Kempton. Deep down in the soul, maybe, where no medicine can help him. Well, I ain't that a hog waller and shame. Fella loses himself a war, tries to win a little bit of it back by swilling down all the liquor he can get his hands on. Well, he ain't gonna get no head holding from me. Blind man could see that you're from the South, Mr. Hollister. You don't go around falling down drunk. Different people have different problems. You two are catfish from the same slough. But I'll tell you this, Mr. Hollister. My folks come from Tennessee. Me, I went up to Southern Ohio. So when the war come along, I fought with the Union. But my two brothers, they fought with the Confederacy. I got this here leg at Antietam. They both got killed. I had a little bitty old farm in Ohio, and they had some scratching land in the hills of Tennessee. They didn't have no slaves. They was lucky to have mules, but I fought them. And they fought me, and you know why. Why, Mr. Kempton? Because folks in the South like Drake there, and lots of other folks like him up North, they was too proud and too important and too bigoted to sit down and settle their fuss and peaceable. They wasn't gonna talk. No, sir, they wanted to fight. And for every one of them that fought, there was a thousand like me and my brothers. All we wanted to do was stay home and raise our crops. And the fine crop you raised, Mr. Kempton. Bullets and blood. Half a million white crosses on a thousand green fields. I'd sure like a bit more of that sweetening, Mr. Hollister. Well. Here, let me give you a hand, Drake. Help me alone, I'm all right. What's the matter with you? I told you, let me alone. I just want to help you back to your wagon. I don't want any Yankee help. You understand? Drake. Drake. Drake, it's Hollister. Uh, Hollister? Hollister, my head. Oh. Yeah, by the way, just passed out. Give me a hand, Wayne. Goodness, Mr. Hollister. Don't seem to do anything lately, but thank you for bringing Stevenson home. You really don't have to, Mrs. Drake. He's just getting worse and worse. He's lost so much, you see. Maybe you can understand that, you being a Virginian. Of course I do. And so does Mr. Hale. You don't have to be a Southerner to understand these sort of things, Mrs. Drake. You just have to be human. Well, maybe we can talk to your husband when he feels better, Mrs. Drake. Good night. Good night. Good night. Not just that Drake drinks, it's his attitude. He doesn't have to like losing the war, but he spends the rest of his life hating everything north and northern. He's 
life is liable to be short. A lot of touchy people in this country. How about you, Hollister? Virginia suffered as much as any of the Confederate states. I'm afraid you're asking the wrong man, Mr. Hale. You see, I, I didn't fight for the Confederacy. Oh? I love the South. The finest, most decent people on the face of the earth. My family wasn't poor, Mr. Hale. We had almost 60 servants. I like to think that they loved us. We certainly loved them. But no matter what relationships we had, I knew in my heart that slavery was wrong. Even in the closest of relationships, like we had at home, I knew that involuntary human servitude was Satan with a smile on his face. I supported the Union, Mr. Hill. I could do nothing else. Stevenson Drake lost a war and a home and a way of life. He was the lucky one, Mr. Hale. I've lost so very much more. Good night, you sir. Good night. Washington cooking, wearing my fingers a bone. That's all I do around here, no appreciation either. Wait till they see old Charles B. Wooster. Gentlemen, Esquire. You see what I see? I uh, see it, Duke, but I don't believe it. He's washing clothes. Ah, some kind of mirage. Go ahead and laugh, but Charles B. Wooster, Esquire, is going to be the belle of the ball. Why, next to me, you're going to look worse than you usually do. Ha! So, uh, that's what you got stretched up back there. Clothesline, huh? That's what it is, all right. Yes, sir. Well, I almost broke my neck on it, Mr. Wooster. You won't hurt that old sick neck of yours. Besides, I'm going to be clean at that party. Clean. K-L-E-N-E. Clean, clean. clean. Yeah. Go get mine. That's what I call downright unethical. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Pretty bad, huh? Terrible. Duke, you'll find a sack of my dirty clothes inside the wagon. You mind? My pleasure. Well, doggone, I must be getting old or something. What's the matter, Charles? I've heard of clothes shrinking, but this is the first batch I ever saw that stretched. Say, Bill, I kind of like that blue shirt of yours. <laughs> I'd like a little starch in the collar, if you don't mind. I got no... Hey, this ain't my shirt. It's yours. Charlie. Yeah? Uh, the collar's still dirty. I'll call you sneaking in and putting your dirty laundry in my tub. I got enough work to do my own laundry. You better on that. Hey, this ain't mine either. Well, I think it's mighty nice of you to do your friend's laundry. Mr. Chris, that is your blue shirt, ain't it? <laughs> Appears to be. Yeah. I'd appreciate you taking special care of those cuffs, Charlie. They're getting mighty free. Come in. I certainly wish I could send Charlotte to the same teacher. I'm not even going to argue with you. If everything hadn't come out of cans, I wouldn't think you were just flattering me. No, 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 you did not. This venison didn't come out of any can. You're a fine cook, Mrs. Drake. But thank you, Mr. Hollister. If I didn't know better, it could be the way it was before the war. Oh, I wish you could have seen some of the parties we gave then. At Stevenson's family home on Palmetto Island outside of Charleston. Our friends used to come from as far away as Mobile and Roanoke, and we just danced and danced. Well, judging from what little we've seen here tonight, it's obvious we missed a lot. I envy you. Do you, Hale? Do you envy us? Palmetto Island's a blackened pile of ashes. Oh, Stevenson, please, uh, let's just be happy tonight. Beautiful table service, Mrs. Drake. Yes, isn't it? Of course, I had to borrow some of it, but but the linen was my mother's. My grandmother brought it with her from England. And the goblets, the goblets are German. They're beautiful. I remember one spring dance at Washington Academy when I was just a boy. 
You went to Washington, in Lexington? Yes, that's right. Well, then that's it. I knew I'd seen you somewhere before. Oh? Certainly, I went to Virginia Military Institute, class of 58. Well, I doubt if we met, I was class 55. Maybe we never met, but I saw you somewhere. And I remembered you, 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 you came, you came to VMI. I would have remembered. It was talk, a uh, uh, speech. Uh, I know, it was a debate. You were on the Washington debating team, right? Yes, for a while. I was 55. I was, a, I was a first classman. But I remember you. You weren't just on a debating team. You were the captain. You all right, Drake? Yeah, I'm all right. Now I know why I remember you so well. It was the subject of that debate. Well, I'm afraid I don't recall it. I do. I don't remember the nice, careful, legal words you used, but you argued that the states had no right to secede from the Union, no matter what the provocation. Well, was that it? That was it. Well, perhaps it was. We had no choice, if you remember. Your subjects were assigned to us by the faculty. You know what I'd have done if the professors had given me that side of the question? I would have resigned, as any true Southerner would have. Oh, Stevenson, please, don't get excited. You're taking this much too seriously. I was a law student. As a lawyer, we had to practice arguing an unpopular side of any issue. Oh, that issue didn't have two sides. Well, that's all in the past, Drake. Is it? My home's a pile of wet ashes. Today, not in the past. My mother and father lie dead in their graves. Today, right now, that's not the past, mister. Stevenson, they're our guests. They're no guests of mine. <laughs> You're doing that head of yours no good, Mr. Drake. There's something about you. I can't remember what it is, but I will. You stay away from me, Hollister. I'm sorry, gentlemen, but as you can see... Well, we understand, Mr. Drake. I wanted it to be so nice. It was nice. Well, I think we'll be getting back to our wagons. Very kind of you to invite us. Thank you. Good night. Good night, Mr. Drake. I'm in. He's sick, Melody. I'm beginning to think that his headaches are just an excuse. He's being made to live in a world he was taught to hate. Don't condemn him without giving him enough time. I don't condemn him. I'm ashamed for him. I pity him. I don't know what happened to the man I fell in love with. Do you want me to go and find him? Oh, no, he'll be back. The rest of his bottles are here. Good night, Melody. didn't work out too well, did it? Mr. Hale, stop counting on me to help you pacify Drake. The fact that I'm a southerner is nothing but an accident of geography. I was born there, that's all. Is it that easy to deny the world you were born into? It isn't easy, but it can be done. Melody, I said I'm sorry. What else do you want me to say? I don't know, Stevenson. I don't know if there's anything you can say that can make up for spoiling the only party I... I apologize. I guess I've made a mess. I'm not the one to apologize to. To who, then? Hollister? He's the one you insulted. Why? I, I don't know. I... There's something about him. I, I get a feeling. It was just like when I was a little boy, I went out to pick wildflowers for my mother. Well, there was a bunch of them down by the swamp, and I reached over to pick them, and there was a water moccasin coiled up behind him. Well, that's the feeling he gives me. He's a perfect gentleman, and that's more than you can say for yourself lately. Well, I'll apologize to him if that'll make you happy. 
It might do for a start. Hollister? Good morning, Drake. I want to apologize for the way I acted last night. You weren't feeling very well. Well, I knew how I was feeling. I knew better than to act like a bore. I spoiled my wife's evening. She hasn't had many nice evenings in the last few years. Very well, I accept your apology. Although it really isn't necessary. Anyhow, with all these Yankees around to get mad at, what's the sense of me blowing up with you? We ought to stick together. How's with Bull Regard in Tennessee? Who'd you serve with? I'm, uh... I'm afraid I didn't do the Confederacy much good. See, I was away during the war. Well, then you didn't fight? Not directly. I see. Anyhow, I meant what I said about last night. Forget it. Trying to decide who's got more on his mind, you or Drake. Everyone on this train has troubles, Chris. That's for sure. But I'm kind of personally involved in yours and his. You feel guilty about the war, about the way you felt about it? Never. Regretful sometimes, but never guilty. Good. What you did took a lot of courage. Did it? Well, yes. Fighting for the Union. I didn't fight for the Union. I fought for no one. Not the way you think. Just what did you do? What I thought was right. What is bothering you, then? That old question. Was I really right? Was I terribly wrong? Whatever it was you did, would you do it again under the same circumstances? Under exactly the same circumstances, yes. But I'm not the same man I was then. Look at me, Hale. I never wanted to hurt anyone. I never met a man I hated. The sight of Anyone's suffering makes me almost physically ill. And yet, these two hands of mine helped kill half a million men. Holiday. You, Mr. Hollister. I was just taking a walk. It's very strange, so was I. Really? For a moment I thought you were crying. Oh, if only you would. If only I weren't what? Everything he's supposed to be. I guess I'm not very much of a woman. I thought he'd always be the same. You mean the same as the boy you married? You wouldn't want that. I certainly don't want the man he's become. Are you sure you know what you want? Yes. You. Oh, I don't mean exactly you, John. I, I mean the kind of man you are. What Stevenson should have grown into. Kind and thoughtful and gentlemanly. He's just a sullen little boy. You're a man. Don't think too highly of me. Why? Because you're afraid I might fall in love with you? Or you might fall in love with me? That wouldn't be hard, Melanie. No, it wouldn't. But you've got to understand why. 
It's, it's what we see when we look at one another. It's not the man that I am or the woman you are. It's what we represent to each other. I'm nothing but a way of life that you've lost and you want to regain. And what am I to you? You're a, a rose that someone has stepped on. And I want to pick it up and hold it and protect it. Because long ago, roses grew in Virginia and I loved them. And I'll never see them again. But that means nothing. If you knew the truth about me, you'd, you'd loathe the sound of my name. You'd despise me. You'd run to your husband as if he were a saint. But I do know you. What could you have possibly done that's so terrible? Stevenson said you didn't fight in the war. He was wrong, wasn't he? You fought for the Union, didn't you? You think I could hate you for that? Oh, John. I supported the Confederacy with everything I had, my heart and mind, and my money, my jewelry, my time. But don't you think that I can understand how a decent Southerner who truly believed that the South was wrong would have to do what he thought was right? I know there were such men. I, I disagreed with them, but I couldn't hate them for doing what they thought they had to. Will you always remember that? That you wouldn't honestly hate a man for doing what he thought was right? Of course. I guess we'd better go. Yes, I suppose we'd better. Melody, I, I can't find my... Where have you been? I went for a walk. I bet you did. I don't know what that means, Drake. Means you and my wife been taking a walk. I bet. Oh, Stevenson, Mr. Hollister just walked me back to my wagon like any gentleman would. Gentleman? Back home, we'd take a horsewhip to that kind of gentleman. Now, listen, Drake. Mr. Hollister, I apologize for my husband. He's too sick to know what he's saying. But not too sick to know what he's seeing, though. You've got a real talent for making her happy, haven't you? Making her happy is my concern, not yours. Then why don't you try? Don't you tell me how to handle my wife, mister. See me when your head clears. I'll talk to you right now. I've been thinking about you. I knew most of the good folks in the Shenandoah Valley when I went to school. All the good families. And not one of those good families was named Hollister. You don't say. I do say. I say that either makes you a liar named Hollister or a coward named something else. I wonder which you are. Just one more thing. If I ever catch you talking to my wife again, I'll kill you. Where's my liquor? It's gone. What do you mean, gone? I mean, I broke every bottle of it. Are you out of your mind? What am I going to do when... Did he put you up to this? Oh, Stevenson, please, there's nothing between us. Well, you won't be seeing any more of him. I told him I'd kill him. I know. I suppose you're proud of that. If only you hadn't been so... If I hadn't been so good-natured? Well, he won't be back. Any man would take what I'd give him as a coward, afraid to fight. That's not true. He did fight in the war for the Union. He tell you that? Well, you picked yourself a real good one, didn't you? First he's a liar, and then he's a coward. Now it turns out he's a traitor to boot. Well, Duke. I can't understand this trip. One minute water's so scarce, we're washing in sand. The next minute, we got it coming out our ears. The river's still high, huh? As high as I've ever seen it. Well, I guess we'll have to stay here for a few days. Well, I've seen worse places to hold up in, Chris. Got a long way to go. I hate to waste time. I'll pass it on down the line. Hale. Oh, hello, Drake. How are you feeling? I'm sober, if that's what you mean. A little touchy, too, aren't you? You were in the Union Army, weren't you? I think you'd be better off to stop worrying about such things. It's important to me, Hale. Sure he was. Me, too. Lots of folks was, son. Did Hollister ever talk to any of you about what he did during the war? All we have to know about Hollister is that he's going west, same as we all are. I understand he fought on the Union side. 
make you feel any better. As far as I know, he was a non-combatant. Probably wasn't even in the army. Are you sure? No, I'm not sure. But he seems to have scruples about fighting. You call it scruples? I call it cowardice. Maybe he was a southerner who thought justice was on the other side. Does not wanting to kill his fellow southerners make him a coward? He did something during the war. Something I can't put my finger on. If he was in the army, it was probably in a staff capacity. Maybe he was one of them garrison soldiers. What did you say? I said maybe he was one of them garrison. What do you suppose? Chris, you better keep an eye on that boy. I intend to. Charlie, find Hollister. I want to talk to him. Yes, sir. I don't know why. Because I'm going to kill him. Stevenson, no. you tried to do, Drake. Now, what's the meaning of this? Ask him who he is. Find out his real name. I'll show you something. Look at those. Read them and give me one reason why I shouldn't kill him. Palmetto State Journal, September 21, 1859. Horror on Palmetto Island. Friends will be grieved to know that Colonel and Mrs. Fitzhugh Drake of Palmetto Island were treacherously murdered last Tuesday night by their own field hands. Colonel Beaumont Olay, commander of local militia, found the Drake home burned to the ground. The rebellion is believed to have been incited by abolitionist agents. Your home, Mr. Drake? And my parents. Well, I'm sorry, but I don't see what this has to do with Mr. Hollister. Read the other one. Liberator. I see you know the name. Abolitionist paper published in Boston. I read one of them once. Trouble making rag, them abolitionists should ought to have been hung. Read what it says. Loud, good and loud. I don't care whether you're north or south. Listen to what it says. Editorial. It is with mixed emotions that the editors of the Liberator read of the recent tragedy at Palmetto Island, South Carolina, in which innocent men and women, goaded and tormented beyond their endurance, rose against their heartless masters and destroyed them. But let slaveholders read into that news their own inevitable fate, the inexorable judgment of an angry God. The abolitionists came in. They put guns into the hands of our servants. Guns and axes and knives. And showed them how to use them. When my parents' will was read, my father had given freedom to any of our people who wanted it. They granted freedom to the same people who cut them down. They died because of men like John Brown. But we caught him. We hung him. But we hung the wrong men. We should have caught the men behind him, the ones who given the guns and the money. They're the ones that killed my parents. The ones who published murdering, vicious, lying incitements to rebellion. Like this. Well, that's all very well, but... Let me finish, Hale. And then let me finish off this man who calls himself John Hollister. That's not his name. Here's his name. The editor of the Liberator. Hollister John Garrison. That man right there. Oh, no. It, that can't be. Is this true? 
I am Hollister Garrison. Now, you be quiet, Drake. We're not going to stand for any more trouble. What's the matter with you? I told you who he was. Being an abolitionist was never a crime. What kind of people are you? Peaceable ones. Now, you stay out of this and let Mr. Hale handle it. And keep this thing in your holster. What do you want, Carl? I just want a close look at this critter now. I know what he is. Don't you give me any trouble now. Now, how I feel about this is immaterial, Garrison. But there are a lot of people who have a pretty low opinion of abolitionists. I'm one of them. Be that as it may, I've never done anything personally that I've been ashamed of. You started a war, didn't you? I published a newspaper with a circulation of just under 4,000. You're flattering, but not very realistic. I got this fight in that war you helped to start. It sure wasn't my war. You're giving him a little too much credit there, I think, Carl. Oh, I know it wasn't him alone. I know that. But it was him, people like him, folks on both sides that just would not give an inch. You add up enough blockheads like that, you can't help but have a war. He's right. He didn't have any stake in the slavery issue. Yet he was the one who was hurt most. I can't understand how a southerner like you knowing the pride of his own people, could expect to get anything but war out of them by calling for the use of force. I believe then, and I believe now, that human slavery is no more open to negotiation than is murder. I did the right thing. I helped set a people free. I wonder how much of the world's trouble is caused by righteous people making up their minds to force their own particular brand of righteousness down somebody else's throat. I don't hold with slavery, but I don't hold with war either. From now on, Garrison, you better stick close to your wagon. You've paid for your passage, we'll do what we can to protect you. But there's one thing we can't protect you against. And that's yourself. <laughs> Drake, if he didn't behave himself, I'd slap him down again. Can't say as I blame him too much. For feeling the way he does, I mean. Well, the people like Drake, abolitionists are about ten shades worse than the devil. You know, I'll never forget before the war back in Missouri. Saw a bunch of real nice folks go in and break up on those abolitionist newspapers. Took the editor and threw him out of town on a rail. Lucky he didn't get lynched. Doggone it, Chris, that was a long time ago. Yeah, well, Bill, there's nothing sticks so long as a bad memory. Carl, I'd like you to do something for me. You're pretty close to the Drakes in line. I wish you'd keep an eye on him for me. You might try something foolish. Yeah, I'll watch him. I've had all the North-South fight, and I won't. What about Hollister? All he wants is to be alone. Yeah, I'll be mighty glad to oblige him. Good day, gentlemen. Smart move, Chris. Carl's a tough old coot. Drake doesn't behave himself, he's liable to get spanked. What do you think of your perfect gentleman now? Oh, Stevenson, please. Maybe you and Mr. Garrison ought to take another little walk. Talk about the old days. I never want to hear his name again. Don't you worry, Melody. Time I'm done with him, there won't be nothing left of him or his name to harm anybody. What are you doing? Leaving. For where? Somewhere. Anywhere. Nowhere is more like it. We're still a week away from Hawkinsville. That's the nearest settlement. A week could be too long, Mr. Hale. Well, you could join a train going east from there, if that's what you want. Right now, you wouldn't get 30 miles traveling on your own. I can't stay here. Not now. You don't have any choice. There's nothing going to happen between here and Hawkinsville. And I've asked Carl Kempton to keep an eye on Drake. 
That worries you. Do you think that I'm afraid of Drake? I couldn't say. Hale, when you take the course that I took, you can't afford to be afraid of anything, let alone a man like Drake. I've been threatened by many more dangerous men. It's just that I've already been responsible for too much trouble. I don't want any more, ever. If you insist that I stay, I will. But only until we reach Hawkinsville. I'll be leaving the train there. Figure to do a little shooting, Sonny. None of your business. What I've just done was to show you that when I say something, I can back it up. And I'm saying don't try nothing cute with Hollister. You one just like him, aren't you? If I had my way, you'd both be locked in a silo with an ax apiece and told to go at it. I don't like you and I don't like him. But as far as I'm concerned, the killing was over when Bobby Lee shook hands with useless Grant. And any way I can help it, there ain't gonna be no more. You're taking a lot on yourself, aren't you? I took four years of killing on myself. When it was over, I got down on my good knee and I thanked the good Lord it was done. You try to start it again, I'm gonna break every bone in your body and you better believe that. I'm gonna kill him. And I'm gonna be pulling on the rope that hangs you. There's a legitimate way to kill a gentleman without being hung. Or maybe you wouldn't know about that. You just remember what I said. No trouble. I ain't gonna stand for it. Garrison. You shouldn't be here. I came to ask you to leave the train. I plan to, in Hawkinsville. I mean, right away. If you don't, my husband will kill you. I don't want that. Thank you. It's not for you. As far as I'm concerned, you deserve killing as much as any man. It's what would happen to him I'm worried about. Are you sure? You told me once that you could understand a man giving up everything for something he honestly believed in. You have a short memory. I thought you meant you fought for the Union. I did in my own way. Melody, I loved the South. They were my people. Why doesn't anyone understand that? The South was sick. I wanted to help cure her. Like a hangman cures. I'll do the curing now. You're a liar, a sneak, and a coward. You just put your filthy hands on my wife. And you tried to break up my home. And you're going to defend yourself for that. Stevenson, don't. Shut up. I brought along a gun for you, Mr. Garrison. You wait a long time for me to use it. I'm giving you a chance to die with whatever fragments of honor you have left. Last night you were convinced I had no honor left. What made you change your mind? Do you want me to shoot you down where you stand? Oh, no. Touch her again and I'll... That's just fine, Hollister. She's my wife. She's gonna be around me a long time. Whether she finds that pleasant or otherwise is up to you. I'll take the gun. Your husband and Hollister? Yes, please hurry. Well, you go get Hale and you make it quick. Five paces, Mr. Garrison. Whatever you say. Will you count? I will. One, two, three, four. Hold on. I... Five. So... Who did it? It was an accident. I swear he, he ran in between us. So you had to start it all over again. You and your sacred field of honor. Drake's right. It was an accident. So was the war. And it's always the Carl Kemptons who die, not you. Never the right people. Now you satisfied? No. I've got a shot coming. Are you out of your mind? One shot, Drake. 